This orientation is for advisors that are running first round test events. The events on the left are first round test events where the test score is added to the skill or action score to get the final top six. And then on the right, medical spelling and HOSA bowl, the round one test score is not part of their final scoring. These events take place Thursday morning or Thursday afternoon at 10 and 2, with competitions beginning approximately 30 minutes after your orientation. Please see your event schedule for time and room. Since this is a test only portion of your event, it is tabulated using the Scantrons and does not require judges. Please print and review your event guidelines. Be very familiar with the guidelines. It's the best thing you can do to have a smooth running event. The event manager, you are responsible for coordinating the event and just helping to plan how you're going to run it. You also will attend orientation in headquarters. Event personnel, you will assist and help run it any way possible and you will not report to orientation, you will report directly to the event room, where the first thing you need to do is make sure that the room is set up correctly for your event. Your room should be set up in what's called a school room set, which um, are just tables and chairs for your students. Each table should have three to four chairs, and just make sure that you have enough chairs for the maximum number of students for that event. You will have some chairs in the room for the advisors, uh, if there is room for a table for the advisors, you'll have that as well. You will also have a table and two chairs for the advisors outside the door of the room to help you organize when getting the students in. We are trying to take confidentiality on this very seriously because our ability to maintain the confidentiality and integrity of the events is what makes sure that we have fair and equitable events in all the future years. So we do ask that the advisors running the event set the example of integrity and honesty, which means you know we cannot take pictures of tests, make copies of tests, write down test questions, things like that, because that gives your students an unfair advantage in future years. We also need to make sure, again, that we are setting the example for the students. Now, if a student has a question about the test itself or a test question, of course you can look at that. Um, but we really cannot help a student with a test question. Your best response to them is, Go back to your seat, read the question again very thoroughly, and choose what you feel like is the best answer for that question. We really can't help them with the questions. We also can't remove tests from secured locations, and we can't let students in where the tests are outside of times that they're supposed to be there. This is a sample of the confidentiality form that each advisor will be asked to sign and return to headquarters. In orientation for the event managers, you will receive your event binder, which will have your competitor list, your roster. It'll have your test, your Scantron sheets, your confidentiality forms, and your survey forms. It will also have anything else that we think you might need to refer to. Um, for medical spelling, you'll have some Tabor's dictionaries, things like that. You each will also have a set of guidelines that you can refer to in your binder, and you'll have a dress code that you can refer to in your binder. If for any reason the event manager cannot attend orientation, please notify me as soon as possible because we have to have a person from your team in orientation to receive any last minute information and to sign and count for the test in the Scantron sheets. Again, please be familiar with your event guidelines because you will need to follow them as closely as we possibly can at State. Once the event manager gets to the event room, the team really needs to get together and you need to make a plan. How are you going to get the kids in the room? Um, who's going to check guidelines and dress codes? 
who's going to hand out the test, who's going to read the instructions, who's going to time the test, that type thing. Everybody needs to know their job. My suggestion, and you can use this or not, whatever works best for you, but my suggestion is to use that table outside the door to your advantage. Have the Scantron sheets in alphabetical order and have a couple of the event personnel at the table outside the door. As the students come up to enter, check their name on the roster, provide them their, their correct Scantron form, have the second person there very discreetly check their dress code and ask to see their guidelines. And then after we've done this, they can go on in the room. If you feel like you have a problem with dress code, do not say anything to the student. We will handle this very discreetly. Um, let the student go on in the room and then get with another member of your team. Ask them to go look at that student's dress, do it discreetly, and then you'll come back and talk about it. Refer to the dress code example that's in your binder. Does the student meet dress code or not? If they do not meet dress code, document it on the roster. If you don't know if it's iffy, they might or they might not, let the kid have the points. Let's err on the side of the student. They're nervous. They've worked hard to get here. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Again, you will only document on the roster if the student does not meet dress code or does not have their guidelines. Otherwise, there's no need for you to write anything about it on the, on the roster. Once you have the students checked in and everybody seated in the room, instruct them to turn off their cell phones, completely off. Then they should place them face down at the top of the table where they're sitting. At this point, if their cell phone rings or vibrates or causes a distraction in any way, penalty points will be assessed and you need to document it on the roster. Hand out the test face down. Tell the students not to look at them yet. Read the directions page to the competitors and this page will be in your binder. Answer any questions the students may have before you start. Remind the students that the round two postings will be on the Alabama HOSA website and that's where they need to check to, to determine if they're moving on to round two. We are hoping to have a link from the home page itself so that it's very easy to find and get to. At this point, begin the timer and begin the test. Um, you can collect the test and, and Scantrons one of two ways. Either you can have the student bring them up to you when they're done and then they can exit the room or they can raise their hand and you can go and collect the Scantron and test and then the student can exit the room. Whatever works best for you is fine. Just make sure the students know what they're supposed to do. In the event that your tables have tablecloths, you need to make sure the students know that they need to place their Scantron on top of their test packet before they go to bubble it in. If they try to bubble it in on a table with a tablecloth, there is a very real possibility that their pencil could puncture through the Scantron sheet and then it might read incorrectly going through the machine and we really don't want that to happen to a student. If your test has a writing portion of any kind, then the student is to write that on the test itself and make sure their name and their school is also written on their test. Again, the top six competitors, and it'll actually be the top eight for HOSA Bowl, will be posted to the Alabama HOSA website. The student is responsible for checking the website to find out if they move on, and they need to make sure that they have checked the event schedule to see when and where their round two will be. Some possible problems that you might have. You might have a student that arrives late. We are not going to disqualify the student for that. You will orient them outside the room and provide them their test and their Scantron and let, let them go and sit and 
They can take the test in whatever time is remaining. We will not give them additional time, but we will not disqualify them from the event. If you have a student present that's not on your roster, that could happen. It's okay. The students are nervous, so first thing, make sure they're in the right place. They could have just gone to the wrong room. If they assure you they're in the right place, give them a blank Scantron sheet and a test and let them test. Make sure you put your their name on the roster, and then when everything's turned back into headquarters, we'll make sure that that student actually was registered for the event. Just keep the goal in mind. We are to set an example of high standards and integrity for our students, and we want to create as fair an environment and a competitive event this year and in the future years as we can. If a student has a grievance or a question, listen to it. Fix it if you can. If it's as simple as changing out a chair that wobbles, change out the chair. If they have a problem with a test question, we cannot fix that. But assure them that that same problem is there for every student. Therefore, it is consistent and it is fair. If um, you can't fix their problem, they can take it to their advisor who can file a grievance at headquarters. But keep in mind that we are all human. We are doing our very best to be as fair and consistent as we can. And we need to make sure that any grievance or any complaint is kept in a, is handled in a professional way and is kept confidential. When the event's complete, again, check your test and scantrons, make sure we have them all. If you have a team event, paperclip the teams together, complete the event survey, look at your check-in sheet in your binder to see what needs to go in that front pocket before you bring it back. And then the event manager will bring the binder back and sign it back in. The check-in sheet looks like this. Make sure the front, the, not the front, make sure the top portion is filled out because we will be taking these out and separating them so that it's easier for me to manage when I get back to the office. Then look at the collect and return portion. Make sure that you have all of these things. Some of your events will have some supplies like Medical spelling will have a dictionary. Um, most of them will not have signs. If your event didn't have a sign, then just mark through that because you're not going to bring back something you didn't have. And then place the things in the front binder that it's asking for there. Spend a little time on those bottom questions. Overall, how did this event go? And remember, this is event specific. It is not about SLC. It's about the event. How did this event go? What helped you? What ran smoothly? If you ran into a challenge, what was the challenge? Maybe there's something I can do next year so that that challenge won't be there. And if students had misunderstandings or there were any problems with the guidelines, let me know that as well. I cannot change the guidelines, but I will provide this information to nationals. Thank you all so very much for all of the help that you provide and everything that you do for the students. We absolutely could not put on State Leadership Conference without your help. Thank you.